You're listening to the Weekly Wrap-Up on Sprott Money News. Well, greetings once again from Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. It's Friday, October 27th, and this is your Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and joining us as usual this morning is Eric Sprott. Eric, good morning. Hey, Craig. Great to be here. Hey, and uh, Eric, I got some news for you just before we get started. Sprott Money now carries Scottsdale Mint products in the USA. So we want everybody to uh, check that out and order today at our Sprott Money U.S. site. Uh, Eric, it has been uh, another down week in the metals just this morning. We got news that the U.S. GDP for the third quarter exceeded expectations. We had some, I guess, what was interpreted as bad news for the euro yesterday. All of this is pumping up the dollar, and uh, down goes gold. Uh, What do you make of this week's price action? Well... I mean, it's more of the same in a sense, and I feel somewhat frustrated, which I expressed uh, quite a few times in the last few uh, times we've chatted, uh, that you know that the uh, the commercials aren't finished yet because they haven't got rid of the uh, short positions, so they're going to use anything to uh, to try to break 200-day moving averages and various things like that so that they get the specs to sell. Uh, it's been a long, slow process, unfortunately. Uh, even though we're on the side of the speculators, so you kind of see, you, you know what's likely to happen here. So I guess we got to wait to get through it. Uh, do I believe the GDP numbers? No, I don't, uh, particularly with uh, the impact of hurricanes. I don't know whether in the, the very short term it helps because everyone goes and drains the stores of everything, and that maybe there's some place to pay later. But anyway, uh, I just I don't see it. I see lots of data. You know, we get to look at the retailers and the, the new uh, the building permits and so on, and the car sales are weak. So I don't know where where all the strength is coming from, uh, except maybe uh, the people in the stock market are getting higher bonuses or something. But uh, <laughs> uh, I don't I don't see it in the real economy. Yeah, that's for sure. That's the old Keynesian trick, right? Break a bunch of windows. That's good for GDP. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, and we did have this uh, this uh, sell off in the euro yesterday after the ECB uh, announced their taper plans, and you know the, all of a sudden the dollar is just rallying back like crazy. Um, yeah. Is that a, a transient thing, you think, or is that something we got to worry about into the end of the year? Well, you know, when you get into currencies and short-term volatility, I mean, it's a mugs game. I mean, nobody has any idea. You know, it's always like which guy's in the sin bin this week and then the other guys do well because the other guy looks like a piece of crap. And uh, so now it's uh, the turn for the euro to act that way, and then everything else rises against it. But, you know, we we obviously take a long-term view here, and I've said this many times, in my mind, the U.S. is broke for sure. The problems keep manifesting themselves. The whole pension thing that just keeps coming back, and the 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 deficits and the underfunding of the states. And oh my God! And oh, I see the the, uh, the premiums for healthcare. What did I read? They're going to go up on average at thirty eight percent this year. Yeah. I mean, it's just who who can afford that stuff? I mean, people have to buy this, you know. And I'm sure whatever uh, Medicare costs, it's it's going to be the same for the average individual who's paying insurance because it's it's all a function of the healthcare costs, which are totally out of line. So, you know, this is just consuming way, way, way too much of people's income. And uh, is there any wonder that they don't have that extra, you know, 500 bucks a month to spend on something because it's going to healthcare these days. So, anyway, I'm I'm not a fan of the U.S. dollar. Obviously, all those people who buy cryptocurrencies aren't. The people who buy gold and silver aren't. Uh, that's a, a growing crowd here. I think it's, um, you know, it's like who's, who's the prettiest horse in the glue factory sort of thing. So yeah. uh, maybe the U.S. dollar rallies, but I would certainly not be and not get enamored with it because, you know, it's going to roll over again. But you touched upon it, though, my friend. Unfortunately, the way the, the paper derivative pricing scheme works, uh, the speculators rush into paper gold and up goes price, and then the banks try to rig price back down and flush them back out. The last couple times, prices dip below the 200-day moving average back in uh, May, May and in July. Had a massive flush that allowed the banks to cover shorts. Looks like that might be what they're preparing again, huh? Yeah. yeah it, it actually boggles my mind that these people keep coming in on that basis, right? That they buy futures in a levered manner. It's the problem is they're levered, right? They're probably putting down five cents on the dollar or ten cents on the dollar, and they, they can't afford the swings because the the, the swing is their one hundred percent of their investment. Yeah. So you'd almost wish they wouldn't come in and play that stupid game where everybody knows that they're so levered that all you got to do is put a little chink in their armor and they got to they got to cover their positions. So 
uh, you'd, you'd almost wish that they wouldn't be buying that, that it was more uh, stable buying, but people buying that uh, are putting up 100 cents on the dollar so they're not going to get flushed out. They're doing it for a longer-term reason rather than some short-term volatility based on the U.S. dollar or some other economic data point that uh, is sort of ridiculous. But anyway, that's the way it is, and we got to unfortunately deal with it uh, for the, for the time that it's going down, the time that it's going up. So we're in the time that it's going down right now. You're talking about investing rather than trading, investing in real tangible things, not just, uh, trading in paper certificates like paper gold, things like that. You've been doing a lot of speaking lately. Uh, last week when we spoke, you were at uh, Jekyll Island off the coast of Georgia getting ready to give a speech. And I know a lot of your, your discussions lately have been about investing and how to invest in the resource sector. I wonder if you, as we wrap up today, if you could just give us a, a hint of some of the things you've been sharing with those audiences. Sure. And I spoke uh, yesterday in Toronto and at the Red Cloud Conference. And they, both conferences were for small small cap companies. And of course, I have a, um, an association with small cap companies. I've always known that that's where you're most likely to find your outsized performance. But it struck me as I was uh, walking in this morning, that uh, what's the what was the key message? And the key the key message that I gave to people is that you know you can almost do it on your own if you take the time to know what's unusual, i.e., great or, or bad if you're long and and react to it, uh, then you can outperform the market. And I sort of think about my situation with Kirkland Lake Gold, where I, first of all, owned New Market Gold. And what took me to New Market Gold? I read a public document that said they had all this high-grade gold they were discovering. Well, I'm thinking, here's a six-gram gold ore body where they're coming up with hundreds of grams over meat. Like, what the hell's going on here? And uh, so I, I investigated it, and I realized, that, oh, my God, this, this might be sustainable. It's the foster home mine that New Market owns, and, and it is sustainable. Uh, one of the other things I pointed out, Lee Kirkland, I said, well, just imagine, folks, uh, when we get to this high-grade gold, what our production is going to be. Because we have an ore body that has two ounces uh, per ton, and we could do 2,000 tons a day. That would be, that would be 4,000 ounces a day. Not that this will happen, by the way. This is all hypothetical, okay? Because we won't be able to do the whole 2,000 in high-grade. But if you could, so you'd be doing like 1.4 million ounces a year from that mine. If you had the, the 1.4, we got about 1.2 that we've uh, identified. But it could, would come out so fast and it's so high grade. And people who, who have their wits about them understand the effect of grade on earnings. I mean, earnings just explode. I mean, going from 6 grams to 60 grams, you know, your earnings probably go up by 20 times or 30 times or 40 times, that sort of thing. So that was one. And it's, it's funny, when I first bought Kirkland, I bought it because the grade at the Macassar mine was going to go from 14 to 20 grams over time. Well, you know what? I got time. I'll take that time, thank you very much, because I know what the difference between 14 grams and 20 grams is in earnings. And and that earnings thing could be an impact of three times. Three times the earnings, well, fine. I'm buying it at X today, three years from now, it'll be three times X. I like that. Um, I could go to Novo with their precipitation thesis. I'm luck I luckily knew Quinton, but, you know, when it starts getting hot and you start reading about the precipitation thesis, you've got to make a decision. Am I in or am I not in? Am I going to believe it or not believe it? And I'm no a geochemist, but, you know, I guess I read enough that I, I started to believe. And, of course, I knew some of the people there and believed in them. So that took me over the edge. I'm in another stock, Garibaldi, that's been hotter than can be. And... Um, I just saw the stock go up, and I happen to be in. And well, why is it going up? And I go to the chat lines, and I'm reading all these excellent, uh, obviously geologists who's saying, "Oh my God, it looks like it could be another Boise's Bay." And Boise's Bay was bought out for 4.5 billion, and this stock at the time was 30 million. I thought, well, that's not a bad deal, you know. I could make 150 times I made money if it's a Boise's Bay, and I kind of like the guy running it. And I see all these geos getting excited by it, so I think I'll go there. And of course, now the stock's uh, 450. But and, and in most cases, the analysts aren't there. In most cases, the analysts never pick up on this. I don't think any geologist has, has written or any uh, investment analyst has written up Ger Garibaldi yet. It's already up 3,000%. 3, and uh, very few are following Novo. Initially, when I bought Kirkland, there might have been two or three guys covering it. But you, So you're kind of on your own anyway. You've got to go do your own work. So uh, what I'm suggesting to people is if you have the time and the inclination, 
man, you can do it on your own. So good luck to everybody. No doubt about it, Eric. And again, it's it's great to have the expertise and some people to lead you along the way. And there are some funds that have that expertise for people to you know buy a basket of miners as well. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, the, the, where the real home runs are is if you can do the do the homework on your own and unearth, <laughs> no pun intended, unearth some special stories. Uh, specifically, uh, Kirkland has had I got kind of a tough period ever since the the earnings came out. But I would suspect that hasn't yeah. dampened your enthusiasm there. No, no. And I can tell you that, uh, I mean, we had a bit of a, a down blip in uh, foster oil production in the third quarter. And I'm absolutely convinced that we will see a significant turnaround this quarter that uh, I might even use the words that would surprise people. I mean, the quarter's not over, and I have no idea what's going to happen here going forward. But, you know, if you can get into some of those high-grade zones, I mean, it sure makes a difference quickly. Uh, to how your quarter shapes up. So I think uh, it's been overdone. And it was a a bit of a disappointing quarter from a t- production point of view. Uh, but uh, believe me, we can uh, recoup that very quickly. We could end up with a um, pretty strong fourth quarter here. So uh, I would certainly suggest everyone stand by. And I would also point out that no, the company can't buy the stock right now because their earnings are coming out next week and all, all, all the insiders can't buy as well. So that gives a little... A time window for people to uh, to cause a little weakness in the stock, but that will end, I think, midweek next week. Good advice, my friend. And I uh, again, I, just like how the metals pull back, the shares pull back. It prov- it provides opportunity if you're a believer and and you have conviction in in uh, your beliefs. So, encourage everybody to do their own homework and and see what they can find out there. Eric, thank you so much for your time again this week. By next week, we'll have an employment report to discuss and. Maybe a bounce in price if we keep our fingers crossed. Until then, have a great weekend. And I've said this many times. In my mind, the U.S. is broke for sure. The problems keep manifesting themselves. The whole pension thing that just keeps coming back. And the 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 deficits and the underfunding of the states. And, oh, my God. And, oh, I see the the, uh, the premiums for health care. What did I read? They're going to go up on average of 38% this year. Yeah. I mean, it's just who, who can afford that stuff? I mean, people have to buy this, you know, what are and I'm sure whatever uh, Medicare costs, it's, it's going to be the same for the average individual who's paying insurance because it's, it's all a function of the health care costs, which are totally out of line. So, you know, this is just consuming way, way, way too much of people's income. And uh, is any wonder that they don't have that extra, you know, five... Trick, right? Break a bunch of windows. That's good for GDP. Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> well, and we did have this uh, this uh, sell off in the euro yesterday after the ECB uh, announced their taper plans, and you know, the, all of a sudden the dollar is just rallying back like crazy. Um, yeah. Is that a, a transient thing, you think, or is that something we got to worry about into the end of the year? Well, you know, when you get into currencies and short term volatility, I mean, it's a mugs game. I mean, nobody has any idea. You know, it's always like which guy's in the sin bin this week, and then the other guys do well because the other guy looks like a piece of crap. And uh, so now it's uh, the turn for the euro to act that way, and then everything else rises against it. But, you know, we we obviously take a long-term view here. Uh, another down week in the metals just this morning. We got news that the U.S. GDP for the third quarter exceeded expectations. We had some, I guess, what was interpreted as bad news for the euro yesterday. All of this is pumping up the dollar, and uh, down goes gold. Uh, what do you make of this week's price action? Well... I mean, it's more of the same in a sense, and I feel somewhat frustrated, which I ex- expressed uh, quite a few times in the last few uh, times we chatted, uh, that you know that the uh, the commercials aren't finished yet because they haven't got rid of the uh, short positions, so they're going to use anything to uh, to try to break 200-day moving averages and various things like that so that they get the specs to sell. Uh, it's been a long, slow process, unfortunately. Uh, even though we're on the side of the speculators, so you kind of see, you, you know what's likely to happen here. So I guess we got to wait to get through it. Uh, do I believe the GDP numbers? No, I don't, uh, particularly with uh, the impact of hurricanes. I don't know whether in the, the very short term it helps because everyone goes and drains the stores of everything, and that maybe there's some place to pay later. But anyway, uh, I just I don't see it. I see lots of data. You know, we get look at the retailers and the, the new uh, the building permits and so on, and the car sales are weak. So I don't know where where all the strength is coming from, uh, except maybe 
uh, the people in the stock market are getting higher bonuses or something, but uh, <laughs> uh, I don't I don't see it in the real economy. Yeah, that's for sure. That's the old Keynesian. Tr- You're listening to the Weekly Wrap Up on Sprott Money News. Well, greetings once again from Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. It's Friday, October 27th, and this is your weekly wrap up. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and joining us as usual this morning is Eric Sprott. Eric, good morning. Hey, Craig. Great to be here. Hey, and uh, Eric, I got some news for you just before we get started. Sprott Money now carries Scottsdale Mint products in the USA. So we want everybody to uh, check that out and order today at our Sprott Money US site. Uh, Eric, it has been 